thank for Frank's last lecture and apparently now the restart during the 21st century. Okay, so we so in, in my previous lectures, I have dropped various hints about a wonderful thing in the last lecture. Um, that was partly because I had seen on the schedule that Thomas was going to give his lecture. <laughs> and I have, uh, Sorry. <laughs> I have uh, great faith in his ability, and I was very excited to see what he would have to say about these things. But it turns out that was a mistake, so uh, maybe it won't be quite as wonderful as I hope. It is right. This is uh, my idea here is to suggest some direct. Well, first I I need to finish describing. Um, the Poincaré uh, level ver uh, view of, of what was done in the last century and show you the Renitsky single obstruction. And then I will uh, talk about what might be, what, where we might go next. Okay. So the context was normal spaces. Uh, just we call on that uh, normal space. There's a space together with a spherical vibration, together with a reduction. This would have to mention K. Uh, the K denotes the dimension of the disk bundle, not the sphere. So, so this is a BK, SK, minus 1 bundle. Um, of course, you can recover the disk bundle by just taking the maximum cylinder. But um, this is this, this is the structure. So bundle means spherical fabrication. <coughs> spherical fabrication. Right. Data, um, you get a, class, uh, a fundamental class where this is a uh, common class. So you get a duality morphism, which is not an isomorphism unless, um, well, a Poincare space is one where you get an isomorphism. And I just mentioned a normal pair. <clears throat> you have the row takes C and K to the top space of C as the four groups to me, uh, divided by the top space of the restriction to Y. And the example is that if f from m to x is a degree one normal map, uh, so this is <coughs> point array here, <coughs> then the mapping cylinder uh, naturally gets the structure of a normal space.
Okay, so now we uh, show that this really does capture the manifold situation. So the proposition that if M, F, X, degree uh, one normal for manifolds, then um, it's uh, normally order to a homotopy equivalence if and only if the cylinder has a point gray structure real average. So what that would mean is why same boundary as the cylinder, namely M and X, um, where this is degree one, normal, and this is point gray. And you refer back to the definition um, of what it means to be normally cohorted to a homotopy equivalence. If you get a normal cohortism, then that gives you a Y. And the x on the other end is a manifold. So the claim is that, um, in fact, it's if you get a solution to the point array problem, you get a solution to the manifold problem. <coughs> Here, the bundle here is 
um, the magic cylinder, the bundle map, it pulls back something that maybe I'll call CY here. <coughs> And the degree one is that uh, this factor, yeah, at least stably anyway, um, this sphere maps into the time space of this pullback time. So we can just make it transverse. So make this transverse. And that gives us a manifold in this thing. Um, on one end it's M, and on the other end it's some other uh, nice manifold.
So we're going to start out with x. This is normal. And um, it contains, well, uh, I should be more careful about that. Okay. So um, suppose x boundary 1, 0x boundary 1x is a normal space. And boundary 1 is point ray. And pi 1, boundary 0, to pi 1, x is isomorphism. Then it's normally forward on. Well, then there's a the structure. <coughs> Uh, 
too many uses of the word X, letter X. Um, what's the name of a space that's not X or Y? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how. I'm not sure how a uh, long-term a solution that is. But that might be another one. <laughs> but anyway, um, this is uh, maps uh, x to z, um, and I want to put in here w1 because. What you learn from the pi pi theorem and these tr tricks for adjusting pi 1 is that in order to line up the pi 1s, you need to know what the w1 is. So basically, um, w1, w is a homomorphism from h1 to z1 to uh, z2. And that and we're going to require um, W1 of x uh, to come from this W. So we want, uh, this, this is describes a twisting, um, for example, in the fundamental class, and we want everybody to have the same twisting. So that's a technical detail that we, uh, well, you try to live without it and awful things happen, and then you realize that the pi pi theorem is sort of telling you that you need that data in order to get things lined up and make it work smoothly. So anyway, this is a map of a Poincaré space of dimension n, and then modulo fordism mapping in it. Okay. Well, okay, we can forget that it's a Poincaré space and we get n normal. So these are the same data, but but we only require it to be a normal space. We don't require the duality homomorphism to be an isomorphism. <coughs> then what the pi pi theorem says is that um, essentially is that the fiber of this is. It's the same. Uh, it's it's the surgery structure. <coughs> and it's the same one as for manifold. <coughs> what I showed you is that um, if you can solve if you can find a Poincaré solution of a manifold problem, then you get a manifold solution. And you can sort of run that backwards and, and squeeze it down to a regular neighborhood of a one or two complex or something. Anyway, it's relatively formal. Um, you see that, well, you can just define this as, um, you can just write down a fiber is pointer A plus normal null coordinate. Okay, formal. Uh, a thing in the fiber is a thing here together with the trivialization of it here. So this is a definition that guarantees an exact sequence. Well, uh, pointer A plus normal boardism is the situation basically we have up there so it gives you surgery. So you could identify this uh, relatively formally ge on the geometric level or you can do lots of fancy algebra and you find uh, you know you do Renitsky algebra or something like that and you can find that you get end up with the same thing. So this is the same L as we had before. Uh, sorry, uh, this this uh, L groups. Sorry, the L groups on the ends are the same. Uh, the, oh, is there some dimension uh, shift? Well, let's see. Something has to go up. Some dimension shift. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yes. No. 
N plus one on the other side. It exists. No, no. L N, N plus one on the on the. Yeah. Okay. To get the end thing right, we do this. Remember, the the connection through manifolds goes to the mapping cylinder. So you have a mapping cylinder of an n-dimensional problem. The manifold problem has an obstruction at L n. The mapping cylinder has dimension n plus one. So an n plus or an n-dimensional normal thing will have an n minus one dimensional surface. There's a shift down line. I mean, basically, we're sort of de-looping surgery theory. And uh, if you really want to think of it that way. Frank, does the W play any role in the normal space volume? Well, remember, a normal space is a space scale of the bubble. And this specifies the W1 of the bubble. Um, so just to give you an idea of how tangled this is, I, I announced this ex exact sequence in the early 70s, I, uh, but I didn't provide a proof, so it didn't become known as a quiz sequence. Um, but Norman Levitt uh, provided a proof, so it's called a Levitt sequence sometimes. His proof is wrong. <laughs> It was repaired by appeal to some work of Lowell Jones and patch faces, which turned out to be wrong. Um, and then there were several attempts to sort of fix that later. So uh, this has been believed for a long time. I don't, as I say, I think with some modern technology, it should not be all that hard to prove it. But uh, we still really do need a uh, reliable proof. Um, and I say there are some developments in the literature that I haven't been willing to read. I mean, they're really ugly. Um, uh, read carefully enough to see whether or not they're wrong or find the error. But um, uh, even if it's in principle, actually proved somewhere, we really need an effective, slick, modern proof. And uh, I offer that as a challenge. Well, now, let's see. There are all kinds of stories that go off from here. <laughs> but I don't want to get taken too far afield. The next. So what I want to do is do the uh, entity single obstruction. <clears throat> and it's quite easy to describe in these terms. Something sort of uh, funny about this. Uh, you know, if you do manifold voltism, it's a homology theory. And the reason is that if you have a manifold matter, <coughs> say a CW complex or a, a polyhedron, then you can make it transverse to the dual cells of the triangulation, break it up into little pieces, and Basically, that describes it as a cohomology class in the Spanier Whitehead dual. Um, so, if you do this for manifolds, you can use transversality to see that you get a homology here. Well, Poincare complexes don't, you can't generally make things Poincare transverse. But there's, this is easy to make something transverse. You know? It, the issue is co-dimension one transversality, and if you have some normal thing here, well, you just take the inverse image and then uh, restrict the data to each piece. 
and, you, and they are immediately normal spaces. You know, what, uh, if you get a bundle here, you get a bundle here. Um, you have the Tom space, so this is bundle one, bundle two. Tom space, <coughs> bundle one, uh, modulo, Tom space of bundle two is Tom space of the bundle one restricted to the intersection. Uh, and so, if you have a sphere mapping into here, you just compose into here, and that gives you the data for a point a normal pair. So this thing splits it up into normal pairs. And then when you, you can glue them back together to recover the original normal space. And uh, the reason this doesn't work on the Poincaré world is that if you split something, well, Poincaré requires that the home, the morphism, uh, duality thing that you get from the Tom uh, image of the sphere, be an isomorphism. Well, you split an isomorphism, you're not going to get an isomorphism. So, but if you leave off the isomorphism requirement, then you get normal space. So, um, transversality, you don't even have to do anything, just take in first image. You know, it's uh, real easy. Um, this it identifies it as homology with coefficients in some spectrum. And the spectrum is just MG. So um, you still have the bundle. You split it down to a contractible thing. What you have is a contractible thing over um, a bundle over a contractible thing and a reduction of it. So anyway, uh, this is a Tom spectrum. For uh, spherical population. And then we need to we, we need to have some uh, orientation. Sorry, Frank, in this case, since you pull the what? You're fine, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sure. <laughs> This is on a group level. If we set z equal to a point, 
then we get normal maps from a normal thing, just normal spaces are equivalent to the homotopy of Mg on the board of them. Or if you take the space version, uh, uh, delta set of uh, normal maps, then you get a, um, an equivalent of spectra to um, uh, homology spectrum. This is Z still Z dead. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And in particular, um, the normal map spectrum of a point is uh, M. So I would write it's it's more revealing to write it this way for purposes of construction. Okay, so the plan with uh, is that um, we can do transversality. Just you take the dual cones and the triangulation, which corresponds to cells in the spaniel vector dual. You make x transverse to that, well, there's no trick to that. It's already transverse. You just, the pieces are just inverse images. So you just think about x broken up into dual, dual cones. Each one of those dual cones has a bundle over it, and you can split up the spherical reduction of the cone space. And so you get normal pieces. Well, we can apply in the coefficients um, the map from normal ordism of a point to a L spectrum of a point. So this is you know, induced by omega n to L. Uh, the surgery obstruction that we saw there. So this goes to H dot X coefficient in L. And I'll come back and interpret that in a minute. Well, uh, the image is the Rinitsky single obstruction almost. Uh, I need to build in a little bit more data. Recall that there's an assembly. This together with the information that is zero, but 
this together with a particular way, it gets taken to zero. And then the theorem is, is that um, this is, this is zero in this context of an element in the homology together with a vanishing of the, of the assembly. assembly. Um, I'll say a minute more about this. This is zero if and only if it, it, uh, x is homotopy to one the manifold. And there's some dimension restriction, I guess. The dimension is bigger than the sum. <coughs> Okay, so we can form, we can, uh, we can reformulate that slightly. I mean, this business about something together with a vanishing is a little awkward, but we have the language for that. Um, if we define um, the fiber of this thing on the on the space level. If you define the fiber as um, S, then um, the, the invariant is element in S. Now this is this is this almost the same S. Um, It's, this, it's almost a structure set, and that's, the, that's where the notation comes from. But um, if S in X is structures on X, S in minus 1 is the structures. Is the structures. So the shift in indices means that um, the Renetsky thing, this is an the Renetsky thing lives in a fiber which um, the next one up can be identified with the manifold structures, and this is, gives you the obstruction manifold. So let me explain. Um, the way we want to interpret this. Um, X is a big union of um, normal pieces. says is, if these pieces are coherently uh, normally worn to the point of rate, then you get a topological manifold. Oh, I should say, this is for topological. So, uh, one way to think about this is local duality implies manifold. Local point ray duality. And this, there are various elaborations of this. If you have a actual homology manifold, with whatever you mean by local duality, you have to fit in there. If you have a homology manifold, then it's a manifold. Manifold, the homology manifold being a manifold, 
Well, in a manifold in the sense that if X is a homology manifold, then there's a manifold and a CE map. Uh, essentially, a, um, almost a homomorphic uh, shape. Uh, point inverses are a uh, shape of a coin. <coughs> there, there are exotic ones that don't do this. Um, and this, this theory, there are two versions of the Renitsky theory. There's one for manifolds that leaves out uh, part of the obstruction, gives you manifold. If you don't do that, then you actually get the obstruction to find this thing being equivalent to homology. So <coughs> you get more than you can imagine when you maybe start out. Okay. <coughs> and one, I go to the quarter after. So now we need to now we get a whole lot more speculative. Uh, Frank? Yep. May I ask a question between so it appears from your description of this photosurgery obstruction that it only depends on the bordism class of flex. While the question whether some concrete complex is homotopy equivalent to manifold is is a question for homotopy equivalent type. So Oh this? yeah, right. So how does this how does that work? Um If these pieces are normally bordered to Poincaré, well, remember there's a pi pi theorem that says that the original thing has a Poincaré structure. So, well, one way or the other, you know, you're broken, uh, act up in the pieces, you get a Poincaré thing over each piece. What am I trying to say? Oh. Okay, I, I, I guess I didn't understand the question. So, so from the from this exact sequence you have on the other board. Yes. It appears that the total surgery obstruction is just the image of a specific class in the board is the Poincaré board is on the left. So it should be board is on the left. Um Uh, no, remember you're not doing this, but you're going to L coefficient here. Um, there is a very interesting story related to your question, but I, I can't. But I can't is, that, is that in the plus vanishing? Do you something there? No. Um, Just thinking, yeah. It's, it's, it's much too interesting to describe in, in a minute. Um, it gets related to uh, the, the Sullivan <coughs> characterization of bundles, uh, topological bundles as oriented theory vibrations. Um, one of the things that, well, I really should, I really need to not say that. Right. There's a, uh, there's a whole lot more to say about this that I have stopped. Uh, not, not okay. What I do want to say is uh, what drives this is that um, there's a structure set of a point, uh, mass of a point, and get G over top. Thing is that 
You start with a spherical vibration. At the end of the day, you get a topological manifold. And among other things, that means that your spherical vibration had to have a reduction to a topological manifold. Well, how does that happen? Um, you sort of see it here. The obstructions to reducing a spherical vibration to a topological bundle are detected by L. So, um, where is it? Oh, did I, I um, is it gone? I guess so. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Renitsky obstruction in the uh, in the homology of actual coefficients in L uh, basically um, organizes the obstructions to reducing the normal bundle to a topological bundle. And if it's zero, then that means a reduction. So um, it goes to zero here. It only has a topological normal bundle. So the back in there, there I mean, there's several ways to try to prove um, the Nitsky thing, <clears throat> and they they involve different technicalities. But one, but the thing that lies behind all of them is that um, you can detect a lot of topology with L. <clears throat> okay. So the, the challenge for the 21st century is to do the same thing for smooth manifold. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
doing. It turns out the image has a life of its own. It's not just an image. There's actually a space there. And in fact, um, there's, uh, um, this is actually a spectrum, ring spectrum. And the homotopy groups are, well, the image of things in BO. So it's uh, simple homotopy groups, and they're known, and I've calculated them. So in order to get rid of the co kernel J part, we want to work with manifolds. Well, we want to work with already complexes whose spherical vibration has a reduction to, the, to J. This is um, Quillen's calculation uh, that he used to solve the, the Adams conjecture, basically, and uh, got him launched in algebraic K theory. This is the K theory of the finite field. Um, and here you're supposed to see a resonance with algebraic geometry. So we're looking for uh, what this is supposed to explain.
Then smooth manifolds. We have this fabulous recognition criteria that's very effective in, in practice, and there's no analog for smooth manifolds. So, for example, if you have an al algebraic variety, you can identify when it's a topological manifold, but you can't identify when it's a smooth manifold unless you know that it's, um, you know, non-singular. And in fact, you know, the homotopy spheres come in as uh, lengths of singularity. So, <clears throat> okay. But anyway, you know, here you might see that this might interface with algebraic geometry. That you have, if you know something about uh, the P forms of an object, um, then you can figure out that it has a, a J. <clears throat> and then the second thing is that we need an idea of map from the algebraic uh, so you use exact sequence I mean if you symmetrize your your quadratic groups and you take the homology instead of the quadratic L spectrum you could take the symmetric L spectrum what would happen to the structure sets um, that's part of the long story 
thing related to the, that Buddhism sequence that I did. Um. But it's really important. I guess the point is that the symmetric L spectrum is a ring spectrum. Mm -hmm. The quadratic thing is not a ring. It has eight in there, not one. It's the kernel of a map to the, the, the thing that I have. The stable, yeah. Which is also a ring spectrum. So the real way to think, if you're doing it, working on the level of spectra and homology and stuff like that, you don't want to think of the ordinary L as the primary thing. The primary things are the symmetric L and the uh, hyperquadratic L. Those are both rings and there's a ring map. So the homology with coefficients in a ring is, uh, that's where you make really good sense of duality. More than that, you have to get it. Okay. Oh, good.